Thank you for purchasing a Raleigh bike for your child. Nothing is better for making a lifelong cyclist than starting them early with a great bike. As you open the box, you'll see there is some assembly required. If you have never built a bike before, this process will probably take you up to 120 minutes. If you are handy with tools, expect to spend around 80 to 100 minutes. If you have done some bike wrenching before but never actually built a bike, you'll need 60 to 80 minutes. And if you're an expert bike mechanic, you can probably be finished within 30 to 60 minutes. Grab the box containing your small parts and get started. You'll need some tools for assembly, including metric Allen wrenches, bike grease, a tire pump, screwdrivers, cable cutters, and an adjustable wrench. Before you insert the seat post, smear some grease on the post to make installation and adjustments easier. And make sure you push it past the minimum insertion line. Close the quick release or tighten the seat post clamp bolt. You'll know your seat post is tight enough if you can't twist it side to side. Check that your stem is facing forward along with your fork. You may need to turn your fork forward to line them both up. If you are unsure which way the fork goes, make sure the bolts will be in front of the fork leg. Tighten the two pinch bolts evenly. The wrench should leave an imprint on your palm when it's tight enough. If your stem looks like this, it's called a quill or threaded stem. Grease the body of the quill and the bolt to make inserting and adjustment easy. Push down on the bolt head with your thumb and insert the stem past the minimum insertion line. After aligning the stem and fork forward, snug the bolt down. The wrench should leave an imprint on your palm when the bolts are tight enough. Remove the faceplate bolts and the faceplate, then center your handlebars. Tighten the bolts evenly and snugly. Then check to make sure you have an equal gap on the top and bottom. To install the wheels, take the plastic caps off the wheel and loosen the bolts enough that you can fit the axle into the dropouts of the fork. Now tighten the bolts evenly by hand until they are snug, then fully tighten them with your wrench. You'll know the bolts are tight enough when the wrench leaves an imprint on your palm. Take off the outer bolt and the rectangular washer. Check to make sure the bolts underneath are tight and put the rectangular washer back on. Slide the training wheel arm on, then the circular washer, the nut, and snug the nut by hand. Before you tighten this nut, you'll want to have about a finger's width between the training wheel and the ground on each side. Tighten the nut with your wrench tight enough that the training wheel can't move up or down. All pedals are right and left specific, so be careful as to which pedal goes where. Use a small dab of grease on the threads. The right pedal goes on the side with the chain and threads in clockwise. The left pedal goes on the non-chain side and threads in counterclockwise. Snug your pedals with a pedal wrench or a thin adjustable wrench. V-brakes have two separate arms connected together by the brake cable. After threading the cable into the brake lever and through the cable housing, pass it through the brake noodle and the pinch bolt. Now center the brake pads so they contact the rim evenly. Slide the noodle into the hinged arm, then test the system and adjust as needed. If one brake pad contacts the rim before the other, tighten this adjustment screw on the opposite arm to even them out. Cut any extra cable down with your cutters and pinch a cable end on with your pliers to keep the cable from fraying. If your bike has plastic bolt caps, push those over the bolts to protect your rider. Then pump up the tires following the guidelines on the sidewalls. Double check the tightness of your seat post and handlebars and test the brakes to make sure that they'll stop you when you need them. Then your little one is ready to go for a ride.